I've never really been that good at math and science. This was something I struggled with up until my sophomore year of high school. I thought that because I didn't understand the first thing about calculus or graphing cotangent, that I wasn't smart. I never even considered the other things I was able to do. Then, I started reading about Gardner's eight types of intelligence. I learned that I could be smart in ways beyond math and science, and even traditional education, and so can you. So, let's jump in and learn about some intelligences. Number one, logical mathematical. This is Sarah. Sarah has logical mathematical intelligence. How do we know that Sarah has logical mathematical intelligence? Sarah thinks about things in terms of patterns. She is commonly known as a logical thinker, and she prefers solving mathematic equations and programming computer codes to reading Jane Austen. She's the type of person who will voluntarily help you with your calculus homework because she thinks it's fun. If this sounds like you, then you're like Sarah, and you have logical mathematical intelligence. Now, this next intelligence goes hand in hand with logical mathematical, and that's spatial intelligence. Meet Sarah's friend Miguel. Miguel can always be found carrying a Rubik's Cube or pocket Sudoku, and on road trips, he's usually the one manning the map or the GPS. This is because Miguel has spatial intelligence, and people with spatial intelligence are really good at manipulating shapes and directions. If this sounds like you, then you might be like Miguel and have spatial intelligence. Now, if you're not that crazy about math and science, these next intelligences are for you. This is Anna. Anna's favorite classes are English and Latin. She has a deep love for the classics, and she can always be seen scribbling away in a notebook. This is because Anna has linguistic intelligence. People with linguistic intelligence have a high capability to express themselves through words. They usually learn best through books and lectures, so if you're super interested in what I have to say right now, then this might be the intelligence for you. Now, let's take a look at a different language, the language of music. This is George. George has perfect pitch. Now, anyone can have perfect pitch if they work on it, but George was born with perfect pitch. He also has a deep appreciation for genres of music that are commonly overlooked, like classical and, yes, even jazz. This is because George has musical intelligence. People with musical intelligence have the mental ability to pick out notes and rhythms by ear, and they can definitely tell when you're singing off-key. If this sounds like you, you might be like George and have musical intelligence. Now, what goes hand-in-hand hand with music? Movement. This is Maddie. Maddie is really good at all kinds of sports, and her favorite class is gym. Maddie spends most of her free time at practice or going on runs. This is because Maddie has what is called bodily kinesthetic intelligence. People with bodily kinesthetic intelligence have a high mental capability to control their body and how their body moves, so they're usually really good at sports. And for those who make the argument that dance isn't a sport, people who excel at dance also have bodily kinesthetic intelligence. If this sounds like you, then you might be like Maddie and have bodily kinesthetic intelligence. Now, where do most sports take place? The outdoors. And let me tell you, there's an intelligence for that, too. This is Andrew. Andrew is commonly known as a tree hugger. He likes to spend time outdoors, and he loves camping. He also loves animals. Every time he goes to his friend's house, he spends just as much time with their pets as he does with them. This is because Andrew has naturalistic intelligence. And no, this doesn't mean that Andrew is naturally smart. People with naturalistic intelligence love being outside, they love the outdoors, and they love spending time with animals. If this sounds like you, you might be like Andrew and have naturalistic intelligence. Now it's time for my two personal favorite intelligences. Now, they often blend together, so I'm here to help you analyze the difference. And these are the personal intelligences otherwise known as interpersonal intelligence and intrapersonal intelligence. This is Josh. Josh has interpersonal intelligence. This means he's really aware of the emotions of those around him. He's commonly described as compassionate and empathetic, and he loves doing group work. And this is Lisa. 
Lisa has intrapersonal intelligence, so she's kind of the opposite of Josh. She's really aware of her own emotions. She kind of prefers to work independently, and she's more of an introvert. The common factor between Lisa and Josh is that people are drawn to them. Some common phrases that they hear are, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I feel like you're someone I can talk to, or, wow, that's exactly how I'm feeling. How do you know? If you've ever said these phrases, then you've run into someone with a personal intelligence. And if someone has ever said these phrases to you, you might have a personal intelligence. Just because you struggle in school doesn't mean you aren't smart. We all bring our own perspectives to situations. I hope that listening to this talk helped you figure out what kind of smart you are and helps you feel assured about your abilities and the future. Everyone has special talents, and it's how we choose to use those talents that make the world a better place. We all have the power to change the world, whether it be through inventing the next electric car, writing the next Hamlet, or just listening and being there for someone who's had a rough day. You are intelligent, and you have talent. So go ahead, take your newfound smartness, and go change the world. Thank you. <laughs>